Good day. Welcome to another edition of Spotlight on Mayapac Schools. Eric Grosser, host, along with Superintendent of Schools, Anthony DiCarlo. Anthony, two weeks of school gone already. It seems like nobody ever left. Yeah, it's amazing. The summer is just a blur, but I just have to take this opportunity to thank everybody in our organization, from our administrators to our teachers to our custodians to our secretaries to our bus drivers. Um, just an incredible opening of school. As you know, you know, last year at this time we had some issues with our buses. We did a lot of work uh, last year stabilizing it and then over the summer. And, you know, I just want to thank, you know, uh, Mr. Ferrone, Mr. Truce, the entire fleet for just an outstanding job on getting the kids home safely and in a timely manner. And to the teachers, I mean, we had a great opening. You know, it's the first time in a while, Eric, that we actually started our uh, superintendent's conference day before Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great opening. Um, everybody's excited about being back, and we're excited about a super 1920 school year. Well, Anthony and I were at the schools on that opening day, and we have some photographs to show you now. The smiles on the children's faces, especially yeah. the elementary kids, yeah. when they walked into that building. And what was really interesting this year, Eric, in speaking with the uh, elementary school principals, the transition was seamless. Mm. Like, the, the kids were eager, they were ready. Um, you know, they came in. Um, really sat down, began to do work. The teachers even felt it. So, you know, it's a tribute to, I think, you know, the manner in which we get transitions ready. You know, coming into kindergarten, we have kindergarten orientation mm -hmm. programs. We have our fifth graders going to sixth grade. We do a great job in that orientation. And the same way, eighth to ninth. So I, I think we've really established a really great transitioning for students to come in to specific buildings, into the district, and it, it set us very, really well. And this guy deserves a little kudos also over here. Story in the local paper. It came out this past week about our superintendent of schools who saved the day yeah. for a young family, first time in America, in the United States, in public school. This guy was there. Tell him what well, happened. Well, listen, yeah, so we were at uh, the Austin Road School, and we were well, starting to welcome students to come in off the buses, and I turned around, and I could see there was a, a family, um, a mother and a father, and, and, and two, um, two, young two, young, two young ladies, two right. young children who were looking and weren't sure about what was going on. And I, I, I started to talk in Spanish. I said, uh, puedes ayudarle, can I help you? And they were like, yes, it's their first day, primer día en la escuela de Austin Road. And then you can see the two young girls' face just beam as I started to, to talk with them, to ask them what their names were. And it was just, it was a, a great opening to a, a new beginning for us, but of course for them coming into the schools um, in, in Mayapac and them feeling at home. So it was great. That's what I love. And Anthony encourages people to become bilingual. Yeah, I mean, I talk to our students all the time about the importance of being bilingual, trilingual, that it opens up the world. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was great. Okay. Really, very much so. The story broke this past week also in the media dealing with a problem with taxes. Yeah. Nothing to do with the Mayor Pack schools or the Carmel schools or the Brewster schools. It was a goof on the county level. But of course, when something like this happens, everyone gets crazy. Yeah, so, um, I, and, I, and to the credit, I, I think, of our, our town supervisor who notified me this past Sunday about it. Um, he was on it. We were in concert with one another. There was an, uh, uh, an important meeting on Monday that took place. And then a follow-up with um, Bill Carlin and Mary Ellen about, you know, what we're going to do. And of course, we sent out a school messenger to the community explaining about the tax bill. We're going to be on a pause while they issue new tax bills. There was a glitch in the software system um, with regards to recalibrating um, tax exemptions for veterans mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to be extending the time frame of, of paying taxes now. And it's gone pretty well. I mean, people understand it. Things happen with technology. Of course. Mistakes happen as long as we get the information out there uh, and we're working closely with the county. Okay, so again, those tax bills are due now middle of October. If you pay partial payment, end of October, Correct. if it's full payment. Correct. Now. Correct. Get those old tax bills, throw them away. <laughs> Don't pay them. <laughs> yes. Congratulations to Vincent Vitanza. Yeah. Vincent Vitanza, semifinals. I mean, yeah, which is great. I mean, that's a tribute to being a, a merit scholarship uh, finalist, which is a national recognition, is really incredible. And congratulations to, to Vincent for his hard work. But it's also a tribute attribution to the kind of education that you're getting here at Mayapac. So we're very, very excited. Um, about this opportunity for Vincent, we wish him all the best. 16,000 young women and women 
now have the opportunity to continue in that competition, and 7,600 National Merit Scholarship winners will be announced next spring. Yeah, it's, great it's an Vincent's exciting one of time, and, and, and it's, again, we're, we're excited. <laughs> we congratulate Vincent and, and also the school district for such a great honor. Well, congratulations. Children's Expo Safety Fair is coming up on the 22nd. Important that families come out and learn about safety. Yeah, you know, when you, when you live in a community where you have a lot of people who are, are biking, who are walking, who are exercising, um, crossing the street, looking both ways, it's really important for, for parents to understand that as a county, as a school district, we want to provide the most safe opportunities for kids to understand about how to be safe mm -hmm. and what that looks like and, and how important that is when you're riding a bike or when you're in a car and, and the importance to buckle up at all times. Those are really attributes that if we can get kids to understand early on, they'll take it with them right through adulthood. That's taking place on the 22nd, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Bureau of Emergency Services Training Center in Carmel. That's on Old Route 6 in the Donald Smith campus. Admission is free. Yeah, which is great. Please take that opportunity to go by. And also, don't forget to get that flu shot. Yeah, I mean, it's that time of the year, and you're going to be getting home from me in the next couple of weeks. I talk about getting ready for the, the winter, and I, I know I talk about the flu shot. I talk about emergency plans. It's really so important because so many illnesses and sicknesses can be avoided by getting the flu shot and making sure over the winter you're, you know, you're covering your mouth when you're coughing, you're washing mm -hmm. your hands consistently, and you know, getting the flu shot is, is, is a big help. Putnam's first flu clinic of the season takes place on Monday, September 23rd at the Carmel Firehouse from 2 to 6.30 p.m. People of all ages encouraged to get that flu shot. No question. Very, very important. We encourage the students as well as our staff because we're always working together, you know, for the course of the school year and we want to make, a, we make sure we protect ourselves to the best of our ability. 18 years already, Anthony, since 9-11. 18 years. Yeah, and Seems it, like and only it, yesterday. Yeah, and it does seem like that. And, you know, what's really interesting is that we last night we're at the uh, Remembrance Celebration up at the, you know, Cornerstone, Cornerstone Park. Park and, and we were there. You happened to be there announcing the names in a very touching manner and then the ringing of the bells to commemorate the lives that were lost and the heroes that took place that day. And we were, we were, we were very, very... Um, Humbled that we were asked, our, our, our acapella group was asked to perform there last night. They did an outstanding job. And I think that's part of small town America and what makes Mahopec so special and Carmel so special that it's 18 years later and we haven't forgotten. And what's also interesting, what's happening, Eric, is we're starting to see a little bit of a juxtaposition, I think, in our, in our society and, and really talking about 9-11, but getting back to, to the civics, mm -hmm. about the importance of civics and what that means you know, raising, you know, young adults and what the importance of that means. And I think you're going to see over the next couple of years a big push to go back to that. We've kind of realized that schools are not just about, you know, APPR and Common Core, but really raising terrific young men and women, understanding what life is all about and about service and about giving back. And when you look at 9-11 and the tragedy that it was, but how many people just selfishly stepped in and try to help other fellow men and how important that that is. We were there, as we said, Anthony told us, we're at 9-11 ceremony in Carmel. Let's go back and reflect. September 11th has arrived once again, and this year in the Putnam County ceremony, the Mayor Pack High School Pacapellas are performing. The first time, very special night for you. Yeah, and it, it's an absolutely great honor. It's a great honor for our school. It's a great honor for our, our students who really understand the importance of what all these heroes did for us and recognizing them and all those who, who perished under 9-11 that we will never forget. And it really is so important, Eric, today in school, you know, we had a moment of silence at the high school and talked about, you know, the heroes to this day, you know, and how important it is to be a hero, what that means, to give of yourself selflessly to be able to go into that type of a situation and be selfless and care about the fellow human beings, and that's a lot. So I think the kids are honored to be here. I know we as a district are very honored to be here tonight. It's important that young people learn about 9-11. It's like you and I with Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Our parents talked about it. We weren't there to experience it, the fright the horror and these kids are going to learn about that. Yeah, so as you know, um, the governor signed a bill a couple of days ago and uh, from now on in, you know, we will be, uh, and we do it a lot, but I think what's happened, Eric, it's very interesting. I think we've gotten away as a society with regards to civics. 
and the importance of civics and what it means to be in a democratic society and to be selfless and giving to one another and how important it is, you know, to be in service of others. So I really think it's important. It's poignant. Um, I know that at Mayapac we're going to be doing a lot of work with that K-12 and what it looks like as a kindergartner opposed to a senior. And, and always remember, because it's something that we need to make sure there's a, it's the fabric of, of who we are as a country and, and giving back to others is so important. And once again, the Mayapac High School, an integral part of the 18th anniversary celebration of 9-11 here at the county seat. Anthony and I will be right back. so, so moving, that 9-11 ceremony. And the young people today, 18-year-olds today, were not around no. when 9-11 happened. Right. It, and now it's so important that the schools get more and more involved right, in The this. state of New York passed a law that we yeah. have to do that. And, yeah. and I think it's, it's the correct thing to do, because we can never forget. Um, and, and it really is important. And it's not just from the, the part of the terroristic part about it, but what I, would, I said before about how humans step up and work and help one another you know, how you were there to be selfless and go in and those, those men and women and firefighters ran into the building while people were running out. And, and that's an important piece to understand about how people can be selfless and help one another at all times. And, and to always be on guard. You know, we always talk about, I think a part of what we explain to, 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 to students now is about knowing your entrance and exits, knowing mm -hmm. things that are going on that are part of a routine of what then goes on all the time. Okay, a couple of events coming up. Back to school nights, open house? Yeah, back to school nights start actually tonight with the middle school sixth grade, but they'll be happening over the next number of weeks. Mm -hmm. So please come out and see the great things that are going on. You know, see your son or daughter schedule and hear the great things that are going on in all the schools. On uh, Friday night, October 4th, mm -hmm. we have, uh, uh, we're gonna be honoring the community volunteers that have just been a, such a part of this community for many, many years and people who are in the service and helping others. We're gonna be honoring them at our football game on October 4th. Uh, we've gone to Local Live. If you have not seen it, um, you can go on to our athletic website. Um, you can actually see our games being live streamed. Mm -hmm. So you have parents, grandparents, yourselves who may be traveling. You can watch our games. The gentleman behind the, the, the video is, is getting them up and uh, available for us on our, our access channels. So we're really, really excited about it. You know. And he's giving us the high sign. It's starting to rain. That's it, it is. So he's saying, guys, there that's enough go. of the show. There you go. Come back in two weeks with more. Well, Eric, again, thank you for all you're doing. Well, thank, thank you. you for what you're doing. And we're going to be doing a lot more of this this that's year. That's right. Amen. Which is really exciting. Great. So for Superintendent Anthony DiCarlo, I'm Eric Gross. Thanks again for joining us for this edition of Spotlight on Mayapac Schools. Stash, keep dry. Have yourselves a good one. We'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye now. For more information, please visit our website, www.mayopac.k12.ny.us.